From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Concerned about dropping trout populations in some of Montana's rivers? I'll take you to a place in Anaconda that's preserving this natural resource. Nearly 400 children die every year from drowning, and it's almost always preventable. I'm Michael George with a warning for parents from a mother who experienced her own tragedy. All right, it is 6.30 on this Wednesday edition of Montana This Morning. Jay McDonald, Chet Lehman, and Matt Elwell with you. A little bit of rain coming into work, but it seems to have kind of died off now. Uh, for the most part, there's still some areas. That, none of it was really uh, particularly heavy, no. um, mm -hmm. at least for us. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few areas picking up some pretty hefty rain out toward West Yellowstone. Right. I got uh, lily pads growing on that puddle at the end of my driveway, <laughs> though. It's been there for oh, so long. Yeah, it's... It's been there a long yeah. time. It has. We've not been, used to that. Since that rain last week, it has <laughs> not disappeared. Uh, no. Temperatures <laughs> into the 50s this morning. Uh, you look at radar, there's nothing real heavy, and I'm not getting any lightning uh, data indicating that we're seeing a lot of thunderstorm activity. That may change as we get later into the morning. Uh, Mid-afternoon, I do expect to see the showers start to fade, but we are definitely dealing with some wet conditions, especially in the eastern part of the viewing area. Highs only into the 60s. We may struggle a little bit more in Butte temperature wise, but we're also looking at drier conditions overall as well. I'm going to break down your complete forecast. Take a look at our air quality predictions. That's coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Matt. 631, our top story this half hour. The Anaconda Fish Hatchery has an important job raising trout, and it's more vital than ever with concerns over dwindling fish populations in some local rivers. Yeah, MTN's John Amy tells us the Washu Park Trout Hatchery in Anaconda is relatively small, but it has a big job of raising trout to stock in lakes and tributaries across the state. For 115 years, this little hatchery in Anaconda has been supplying Montana's waterways with one of its most precious resources. Trout. We take care of them day in and day out, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So there's a lot of time and care that goes into the product that we produce. The product? West Slope Cutthroat and Arctic Grayling, two species of trout that are native to Montana waters. The hatchery, located at Anaconda's Washoe Park, raises the fish from eggs until they're old enough to be relocated to lakes and river tributaries across the state. And so to make sure that they are healthy, well-fed, you know, have nice fins and look, look good, um, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of care. There's kind of an art to it. There's an art and a science to it, for sure. So right now I'm scooping out some year old West Slope cutthroat, and these beauties are going up to Cooper's Lake in the Blackfoot. And they're gonna be sending about 4,000 of these West Slope cutthroat up to the lake. And uh, so if you end up catching one, you can thank me. We'll be netting fish from inside and then bringing them out to the truck. Um, the truck has oxygen running all the time and aerators running all the time to give the fish everything they need to survive the trip. While they don't stock trout in major rivers like the Big Hole, which has been seeing a decline in trout numbers, they do stock the tributaries to the Big Hole, and they hope this will help the struggling river. West Slope Cutthroat have been here in Montana for millions of years, and they don't inhabit as much of their historical range as they used to. Um, and so raising them here gives us the opportunity to expand them back into some of the historical range. You must be proud of your fish. Are they like your little pets? Not pets. I'd say more like kids. Teenagers, yeah. They're very moody. Um, they're very sensitive. They don't like us, <laughs> really. So, yeah, we do everything we can for them. <laughs> moody like a teenager. Sensitive, moody. I never thought of a Yellowstone cutthroat trout quite like that. That's <laughs> I awesome. Know. Good That's stuff. That's great. <laughs> No, they yeah, never no. do either. That's no, right. No, slam the door in your face. <laughs> Rude. 634. Uh, we're going to shift gears a bit here. Uh, yesterday, of course, marked the one-year anniversary of the flood that closed Yellowstone National Park. Mm -hmm. For eight days, cut off travel from Gardner to Mammoth Hot Springs for four and a half months. Yeah, MTN's John Shear reports from Gardner, where some residents are celebrating being back in business.
<laughs> this small group of river guides and other locals are cheering simply because they're still here. We have a strong community and we made it through. There were a lot of people who are very community oriented and pivoted to allow this community to pull through. You can see a raft right down at the edge of the Yellowstone River here as a group of kayakers and rafters from local rafting companies in Gardner are celebrating the one year anniversary of the big flood. They're just happy to have made it through last summer when a lot of their business simply dried up. You know, we thought about leaving, but uh, the community was real strong, so we decided we were going to stay and try and uh, just make it work through the summer. So we were taking a few boats here and there. There was a lot of support from Bozeman and Missoula and just all the surrounding area just coming down to give us business and eat at the restaurants and all that stuff. So it was a really cool thing to see that, but we made it through. Now you can enter the park from Gardner. And this summer is a much different story. With a lot of things canceled last year, we've seen what feels like a lot more people for this time of year. And I don't have statistics on that, but just anecdotally based on what I've seen, it's a lot of folks for this time of year. Someone who does have statistics is Park Superintendent Cam Shawley, who says the number of people in the park is already exceeding the pre-COVID year of 2019. In Gardner, Montana, I'm John Shearer, MTN News. Now, hotels inside of the park tell MTN News they're still feeling the fallout, still have a number of summer vacancies. That's pretty rare. The managers also say those empty rooms are starting to fill up fast. Now, focusing from one water passage to another, the Port of Seattle is one of the top seaports in the country. Now, a labor dispute involving longshoremen's unions threatens the nation's food supply. The longshoremen accused of refusing to unload shipping containers. But their union says the ports are open despite reports saying otherwise. Scripps News national correspondent Vanessa Mashanya picks up the story. It looked like business as usual at the Port of Seattle and ports across the West after alleged disruptions impacted work over the weekend. The Pacific Maritime Association, or PMA, which represents maritime companies, says operations came to a halt in some places over the weekend due to things like workers leaving their shifts or not unloading carriers. The International Longshore and Warehouse Union, or ILWU, denies these claims. President Willie Adams saying, quote, despite what you are hearing from PMA, West Coast ports are open as we continue to work under our expired collective bargaining agreement. Longshoremen have been laboring without a contract for nearly a year. The union argues the shipping companies made $510 billion in profits during the pandemic and workers deserve a cut. But the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, citing the Wall Street Journal, says the union's request would double wages over the life of the contract. Maritime companies say freight rates have dropped in recent months and are reluctant to lock into any long-term pay hikes. Business leaders locally and nationally are worried about what impact might be to the supply chain and the 58,000 Washington state jobs the port support here. In a letter to the White House, Chamber of Commerce President Suzanne Clark asked President Biden to appoint an independent mediator to help reach a voluntary agreement, saying that over half of the nation's imports move through the West Coast ports. That's a story we're going to continue to follow. Many of mm -hmm. our products here come through the uh, Port of Seattle, so yeah. we'll continue to watch that. Absolutely right. Uh, meantime, a warning for parents as we approach summer. Nearly 400 children die every year from drowning in pools and spas. Yeah, Michael George speaks with one mother fighting to prevent more tragedies. Shazik Sonoda went through a heartbreak no mother should experience. He was just full of joy and energy. In 2018, her three-year-old son, Yori, drowned in a backyard pool. When you lose a child this way, it's um, incredibly painful and challenging to talk about. Oftentimes, at least in my case, there was something that I could have done to save my child, and it just didn't end up working out that way. Sonoda founded No More Under, a non child drowning deaths. A new government report finds an average of 371 children drown every year in pools and spas. Are many of these tragedies preventable? Drownings are 100% preventable. Sonoda says parents need to learn CPR and make sure they and their children know how to swim. Also prepare before going to the pool. Know if there's lifeguards, take a life jacket, do they have life jackets? 
Alex Hohenserich, chair of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, warns parents to keep their eyes on their kids. We like to say have a designated water watcher. It's an adult who is focused on the kids, not reading a book or looking at the phone. A little preparation can make sure every child has a safe summer. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now, the report also shows racial disparities. Black children make up 21% of all drowning deaths. Back here at home, it is bear season, and Montana's Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks hosted its annual bear safety event to help teach locals what to do if you encounter a bear. Yeah, MTN's Kristen Merkel was there to learn a little bit more about it herself. Montana is bear country, and Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is hosting a bear safety event today to teach people what they should do if they encounter a bear, and I am about to learn how to shoot some bear spray off myself. Hey, bear! I think it's really important, you, you know, to, to know more about birds, you know, the encounters and stuff like that. I think it's really important to, to be informed. Luis Picado moved to Montana six months ago and attended FWP's bear safety event to learn more about the different types of bears in the state and learn how to protect himself by using bear spray. That was really interesting, you know, because usually we all buy the, uh, the bear sprays and we never use them, you know, so I think it's really good to practice, you know. And also I think it's a great idea to have one of those, those anti bear spray can so you can practice at home. The bears that we have in this area, uh, what to FWP's what to expect Morgan there. Jacobson says the turnout for this event was exceptional. I think there's just a, a, a tremendous interest and thirst for information and and you know this is this is kind of a unique situation where you get to practice with you know with bear spray that you don't you don't have easy access to you know in, in other places. The event went over There's several a, different aspects of, of bears, like how to handle bear encounters, in case, bear biology, how bears think and behave, and how someone can avoid an encounter. Traveling in groups, making noise, making your presence known, uh, you know, staying away from things like animal carcasses, um, and, uh, and, and you know, basically taking steps to make your presence known in the woods so you don't have a surprise close encounter. For more information about becoming bear aware, visit our website. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. She said it at the beginning of the story, I'll remind everyone, you're in bear country. Yes, period. That's it. Period, yeah, so absolutely. Be prepared for that. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. All right, now we're going to take a break, but if you're keeping a close eye on your bills, we may have some tips for you.